Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic to see you all here this evening. Even though we're at 50% capacity, I sense well over 100% enthusiasm for what is a very special Tuesday. The 22nd of the 02 2022 is, of course, a palindrome. It's a number or a word that you can repeat backwards as well as forwards. The enthusiasts for this sort of thing tell me it'll be another 400 years before we next get a palindrome of this strength. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel I've been waiting far too long already for a face-to-face -face event like this. Looking out at you here this evening, uh, it's as if your little Zoom face is on a screen, but we are all here in reality to enjoy real students making real music. It's a fantastic thing to be able to celebrate. And just chatting to Andy Rodford, Deputy Head of School, as we came in, he reminded me it was at this event two years ago. Uh, I was actually away on, on holiday, no, on business in Europe at the time. And he was here uh, and took a call in the middle of the concert to say that we were thinking of having to close the school down because of the first cases of COVID that came through. So that's two full years ago. Two whole cohorts of students have not had the opportunity to perform in public. And this evening, we're going to make up for lost time. I feel a little bit like uh, London buses. Uh, they say there that nothing comes along for a whole period of time, and then suddenly two or three have come along at one time. On Saturday evening, I found myself in our school gym celebrating a fantastic win by our senior girls basketball team. And we were there 50% capacity, but generated a huge amount of noise in enthusiastic support. So I hope this evening, as we go through the programme, we'll be able to do that. I'd like to just pay tribute before we begin to our faculty and staff who, over the course of the last two years, have had to dig deep into resources of ingenuity, resourcefulness, and resilience to keep our musical program going. The odds have been very significant from time to time, as I know you all appreciate. Two years ago, uh, Ian Farish wasn't even our director of music, and we hadn't had the opportunity to welcome Mrs. Stella Gwillen as our head of string. So two new uh, members of faculty in new roles to celebrate this evening. We're also looking back over 50 years. This year is our Jubilee year, where we celebrate the coming together of St. Michael's School and University School in the fall of 1971. So we're trying to jubilize every single event. And by jubilizing, I mean that we look back over 50 years and see the evolution, in this case, of music making. And when you do that, you appreciate very quickly that our school has come a very long way. Generations of multi-talented students inspired by some incredibly enthusiastic faculty have meant that our musical program has risen to a point where it's genuinely respected across Canada. So this evening, as well as celebrating the present, we're also giving thanks and paying tribute to all those musical faculty and students who have built up our reputation over the course of, of a 50-year period. And then just before I give way to the real substance of the evening, the musicians, I'd like to give a plug and make a plea that you will all come to our musical, the SMU Review, taking place in March, early March, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. This will be a fantastic occasion at the McPherson Theatre in town where we celebrate uh, 50 years of musical tradition. And it really will be worth attending. If you haven't got your tickets already, I would recommend that you do that because we're anticipating something of uh, a sellout and hoping for full houses. So on that note, thank you so much for being here. It is wonderful to see real people with real faces. I hope that you, like me, will really appreciate the opportunity to hear what our students have been able to put on by way of our programme this evening. Thank you very much.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. My name is Dristi Govender, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Senior School's Large Ensembles Concert. Tonight feels particularly momentous, as we have not performed in front of a live audience in almost two years. Speaking of live performances, some of you might recall that in 2010, Smoo put on a production of Miss Saigon. In the musical, Chris, an American, falls in love with Kim, a Vietnamese orphan, during the war. In a bittersweet moment, the couple sings Last Night of the World, which is the senior school choir's first song for tonight. Thank you and enjoy. Oh! 
My name is Ivana. And my name is Katie. The next song that we will be performing is Danny Boy, a familiar ballad with words written by English songwriter Frederick Weatherly in 1910. He was well known as a songwriter, not least because he wrote around 1,500 songs. It is set to the traditional Irish melody of Londonderry Air, first used as a love song in, 19, in 1894. It has a moving and enduring power as a sentimental song with its simple and soaring melody. Good evening. 
My name is Harris Rothwell. The following piece, Ave Verum Corpus, was written in 1791 by famous composer Mozart shortly before his death. Its Latin name translates to Hail True Body, tying back to an ancient prayer. Please enjoy our rendition as originally written with strings. Good evening. My name is Henry Morton. The next song we will be singing is called Eleanor Rigby, released by the legendary Beatles in 1966. Despite being over 50 years old, the song is still immensely popular among today's audience. In the original recording, the Beatles were aided by a string octet and will be aided by the smooth strings.
the rise in a church where a wedding has been. Lives in a dream, waits at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Who is it for? Writing the words of a sermon that no one will hear. No one comes near. Look at him working, donning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. What does he care? Wiping the dirt from his hands as he walks from the grave. No one was saved. Good evening, everyone. My name is Samuel, and it is my pleasure tonight to introduce Les Miserables. Les Miserables is a musical adapted from the classic historical novel of the same name by French author Victor Hugo, in which he depicted the deplorable living conditions of the most deprived citizens in revolutionary era France and their hopes and struggles for a fair society and a better life. Please enjoy this performance by Smooth Senior School Choir.
Sitting flat on your butt doesn't buy any bread. There are children back at home, and the children are going to be fed. And you're lucky to be in a job, and you're in a bed. Still unclear, something not yet here has begun. Nevermore alone, nevermore apart, you have won my heart like the sun. You have brought the gift of love, do not hold on, deny me suddenly. I see what I could not see. Something suddenly has begun. I dream a dream in days gone by. Welcome, monsieur. Sit yourself down and meet the best innkeeper in town. As for the rest, all of them crooks, rooking the guest and cooking the books. Seldom do you see honest men like me, a gent of good intent, who's content to be. Of the house, doling out the charm. Ready with the hand to get it open. Tells a saucy tale, makes a little stir. Customers appreciate the good fever. 
try to do a friend a favor doesn't cost me to be nice. Well, nothing costs you nothing. Everything has got a little price. Miss her in the house, keep her in the zoo. Ready to relieve the mother soon or two. Water in the wine, making up the weight. Taking up the next time when they can't see straight. Everybody loves a landlord. Everybody's boys and friends. That can't be spoken There's 
the pain goes on and on. Empty chairs at empty tables. Now my friends are dead and gone. Phantom faces at the window. Phantom shadows on the floor. Empty chairs at empty tables. Where my friends.
Good evening, parents, students, staff, and the SMU community. My name is Stella Guillen Fabregas, and I'm the strings teacher at the senior school. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and to share with you all the music that our students have been working on for the past few months. Thanks for being here to support them and to enjoy an evening of music making together. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to thank a few people who are supporting me in my journey as a new teacher at SMU. Ian Farish for his dedication, leadership, and patience. Peter Butterfield and Mary Smith for providing valuable context and feedback. And finally, Donna Williams for creating a program and laying a foundation upon which we can continue to build. Thank you. Tonight, yes. <laughs> Tonight, you will hear a wide variety of repertoire pertaining uh, to different composers and styles. Instead of performing one or two longer pieces, we will be playing a selection of shorter compositions that cover some of the most fundamental skills of orchestra playing, like sound production, uh, intonation, dynamics, articulation, balance, phrasing, and ultimately, and most importantly, expression. As we journey through the repertoire, some of your sons and daughters will take a few minutes to contextualize our selections, giving you what we hope are some points of interest about each piece. On behalf of all of us, we hope you enjoy our performance. Thank you. Uh, the first piece we'll be performing is the Mozart Symphony Number no. 25. Mozart wrote at least 41 symphonies, and there is evidence that he probably wrote even more. He composed number 25 in Salzburg near the end of 1773, when he was only 17 years old. Symphony number 25 com was composed in Salzburg, and it was considered to be Mozart's first tragic symphony. And it was written in the Sturm und Drang style, which translates to storm and stress. This movement in music featured dramatic emotional extremes, often represented by minor keys, as in this symphony, and dramatic and sudden changes in tempo, dynamics, expressive music elements, and with effects such as the use of tremolo.
Originally written by Vivaldi as a concerto for two violins, cello, and strings, this work was later arranged by Johann Sebastian Bach, who was a big fan of Vivaldi. Bach's arrangement was done as a concerto for solo organ. This arrangement is based on the third movement of both versions and combines various aspects of each. William Hofelt wrote this piece to commemorate the birth of his son, Hofelt. That is quite an odd last name. He is the type of guy to walk up to me and say, are you Oriental? <laughs> and even weirder than the fact that his last name is Hofelt is his decision to write a piece for his son. Could you imagine the conversation between him and his son? when you show them the piece? Son, I love you. I love you so much, but not enough to send you to Smoo, but I love you so much that I sent you and wrote you a piece. And the son replies, thanks, Dad. 
That's why I like you more than mom. <laughs> the Gift is an aria for string orchestra that enables orchestra to focus on sound production, phrasing, and expression while mimicking the human voice. So you have to imagine that essentially what the orchestra is, is a choir, which means that all sections of the orchestra have to contribute, even the violas. <laughs> I hope you enjoy The Gift by William Hofelt.
Trotsky's Smart Slav exemplifies the spirit of 19th century nationalism as it was growing in Europe. It was written for a concert given for wounded Russian soldiers and includes regional folk melodies as well as the imperial Russian national anthem, God Save the Tsar. Beginning moderato in modo di marcia funebre, meaning in the style of a funeral march, it opens quietly with the suggestion of a distant approaching army and progresses into a fervent and enthusiastic expression of patriotism.
Hungarian composer Bela Bartók combined 20th century compositional techniques with Hungarian, Slovak, and Romanian folk music. He traveled around the countryside conducting field work and recording villagers singing folk songs. He, along with Kodaly, compiled several thousand folk melodies which, until then, were totally unknown to the rest of the world. He sought the roots of rhythms, meters, and the use of melodic and harmonic foundations in the songs and dances of his people. as part of Shostakovich's suite for Ready Orchestra, Waltz No. 2 is one of the composer's most famous works. The suite was composed in the late 50s and was used in the soundtrack for the Russian film The First Echelon, and later for Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. The suite itself comprises of eight movements, all of which are scored for a large orchestra.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your patience as we make the transition. The elephant in the room is that I think I may have been a bit optimistic to think we could do this in 90 minutes total. <laughs> but it's been two years and we're just uh, gonna enjoy it. So uh, we've got a very short program with the band students. I would like you to take a moment, or like all of us to take a moment right now to appreciate this beautiful space, to appreciate these amazing kids, the school that we go to, and music. Everybody, welcome to a new era. <laughs> There are a few things happening behind me, I know, so I'll keep going with my uh, little preamble. Welcome parents, grandparents, students, and alumni. I know there are a couple of grads from last year here who didn't get a concert, and one of them is here to see her little brother play or to sing. Uh, Devin Mills, it's her 19th birthday. Happy birthday, Devin. <laughs> yeah. Many people are watching at home as well. Welcome from wherever you are. And one of the things that COVID has taught us is how to connect through uh, large distances. There are 67 borders in our 250 performers, and their parents are able to tune in either now or tomorrow or in the coming days. And I think that's a really uh, amazing thing. If we were to look at the positives, that's one of them. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. So welcome. And uh, thank you to Shane and uh, Lumera Productions for uh, doing the live feed and uh, for setting up the video that you can send out tomorrow to uh, your family if, if that's what you want to do with it. So thank you. I'm going to tune the ensemble in just a moment or have our students do that. But just uh, one last thing. I would like to say a congratulations to Ms. Mr. Butterfield and the choir, a fabulous performance. Uh, and to Miss Guillen and the orchestra, the strings, uh, Stella's first concert uh, in this venue and many more to come. Thank you so much and well done. I'll now ask William if he'll tune the ensemble and then Aidan McKay is going to introduce our first piece. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the concert so far. Uh, I must say, the other student announcers are a bit of a tough act to follow, especially Yu Rei Chu with his earlier announcement. Um, but I'll do my best to introduce our, the piece, first piece that we'll be playing as the junior concert band, which is Colonel Bogey. Colonel Bogey was composed in Scotland in 1914 by British Army Bandmaster Frederick Ricketts, who came upon the tune whilst playing golf on the Fort George course where he was stationed. One of the members reportedly whistled the first two notes of the melody instead of calling four. These little scraps of whistling appeared to catch on with the golfers, and from that beginning, the quick march was built up. The song became a million seller in sheet music in its early days, and you will no doubt find its melody familiar from its many incarnations in movies and commercials the world over. It might have, be, it might have even been whistled among the old boys of university school on the parade square as they marched many decades ago in an era that preceded our jubilee, a celebration of the amalgamation of our two schools. Thank you very much. Feel free to whistle along. <laughs>
Oliver is a British musical with music and lyrics by Leonor Barr. The music is based upon an 1838 novel, Oliver Twist, by Charles Dickens, as I'm sure you may know. Its 1968 film adaptation was highly successful, winning six Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Oliver has been performed three times by the SMU Middle School under the music direction of Saint Mr. John Reed in 1994, 2002, and 2011. And among many alumni, our very own Mr. Christopher Smith from the music faculty at the junior and middle school appeared as Fagin in the 1994 production at the Kaleidoscope Theater. Enjoy. I should mention a minor correction. Mary Smith, who's been helping out today, was the music director, I believe, in 1994. Oliver, here we go.
Thank you so much, Junior Concert Band. The seniors are getting ready uh, in the wings. Juniors, grade nines, I'd ask that you uh, make your move now back to your seats, and we'll invite the seniors on. There are a couple of minutes of transition, and we'll be back in business. I've been very lucky uh, to have been with many of these grade 12 students since they were in grade 7. I taught at the middle school for over 15 years and have a real affinity for that age group. Um, and uh, a lot of these grade 12s, I started them as beginners in grade 8 or they were, they were there in grade 7 when I, when I was there. Um, one of those grade 12s is not here tonight. His name is Cole Ashley. He's a, an up-and-coming tenor saxophone player, and he, not just an up-and-coming, he's a real pro. He has his own show at Herman's tonight. Herman's is the jazz club in town. It's an amazing place. Seniors, you're coming up, right? Keep coming. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing the cover talk here. Thank you. I'm going to keep going while people find their seats. Um, so anyway, Cole's online. I'm going to send out that link for that show, and if you want to check out some really amazing jazz with super pros, uh, that would be the place to see it. We're not quite seated, so I'll keep talking. Uh, the Jubilee celebration has been a big thing for us this year. 50 years since 1971. I was born in 1971, so I feel a special sort of connection to that 50-year uh, thing. Um, for our music program, it was the 1980s when things really uh, gathered steam. Uh, and these pieces that we're performing tonight, each of the scores are historical in the sense that they were in the music library, and I picked them. And they all have notes in the margins by the music teachers that we've had at the school, the band teachers, since 1980. And that would include Joan Thompson, who was one of my band teachers, Don McKay, John Reed, and Gordon Clements. I was lucky enough to learn alongside and with these educators. They built this amazing program. There's 250 um, in this ensemble uh, if we were to take everyone together tonight. And I think it's quite a, a tribute uh, to them and to all the hard work that's happened since then. Yeah. Finally, I'd like to say, I know Donna Williams is watching tonight. Hi, Donna. She's in Wells, BC now, retired just this one year. We her, owe her a huge debt for her dedication to the large ensemble movement. Um, we want to keep it going. Uh, this school holds music as a central program alongside academics, and this kind of a night is a testament to that. Thank you very much for everyone who has supported that. Thank you. I will now call on our concert master, Benny Tsai, to tune the ensemble. And after that, Joshua Mwanga and Eric Zhang will introduce our final pieces. As you hear the introductions, consider that music opens the doors of time. It is a history lesson. If one takes the time to consider the context of what we are hearing, listen to the dates, and feel what is being expressed in the music. Thank you very much. Here's Benny. The second suite in F for Military Band is Gustav Holt's second and last suite for Concert Band, or Military Band as it is often called. It was written in 1911 and first published in 1922, a hundred years ago. As you listen, take a moment to consider what was happening a hundred years ago, the parallels and differences with our present day. During Holt's early years as a composer, he wrote pieces based on folk tunes, and there are several at play in these first two movements. The first movement is lively, but Host invokes the haunting ballad, Song Without Words, in the second, a somber melody paired in clarinet and oboe. Here is Holt's second suite in F.
Our next two pieces are Jesus Christ Superstar by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Phantom of the Opera, arranged by Jerry Nowak. Jesus Christ Superstar was performed twice at St. Michael's University School, once in 1988 conducted by Joan Thompson, and again in 2006 conducted by Donna Williams. Miss Williams also conducted Phantom of the Opera in 2016. This being a jubilee year, it is a closing, fitting close to our concert, and it foreshadows the smooth musical review that will open at the McPherson Theater one week this Thursday. Enjoy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our last piece, Phantom of the Opera. Thank you so much for being here. Sorry for going a little over time. These amazing kids are so worth it, and the music has been a lot of fun tonight. Congratulations to all the performers. Thank you.
Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, and hope to see you at the musical in uh, 10 days' time, Thursday, in a week.